Hi guys, a few items you might have around the, ha around the house to do our catching games that we're going to try today and practices. So, any of these items you should be able to use. Um, if you've got an outside space, fantastic. I'm quite lucky, I, as you can see, I'm in my garden in South Wimbledon. I'd much rather be with you guys in Battersea Park. Um, but if you are going to use it indoors, just be careful what you use. Make sure mum and dad are happy with you uh, chucking a ball around and practicing in there. Okay, so I'm going to show you a number of exercises. We'll break them down into beginners and a bit more advanced and we'll change the items we're catching just to make it a little bit more complicated and maybe a bit more interesting for you. Okay. Okay guys, so for today, the first practice, uh, you can use any of the items that we've got on here. I've got a small cuddly toy, got a rolled up pair of socks. Oh, nice and clean, I promise you. I'm lucky enough to have a bean bag. And I've got various sorts of balls, so I'm going to start with a tennis ball today. Okay, so for, so for this exercise, nice wide base. We need to have a stable base whenever we're sort of catching, it'll help us catch the ball. Okay, and all I'm going to do, nice and simply, is bounce it on the floor, try and catch it with two hands. Helps if your ball's bouncy. Um, most importantly, watch the ball all the way into our hands. And then we make that cup shape with our hands. Remember the fingers together, cup shape with our hands to catch the ball. Once we've gone from there, we can go to little catches, throwing the ball. We don't need to throw it much more above our head height. And obviously the more sensibly we throw it, the easier it is to make our catch. Sorry, it's a squirrel just running past. Um, so with our tennis ball, ball can go up in the air. And obviously if you're indoors, be really sensible with this. But if you're outside, you're lucky enough to be, get outside and use this as your exercise time, you can challenge yourself by throwing it a little bit higher in the air. You can't see how high that's going, but that's going really, really high. And then really challenge yourself to try and get some claps in between our catches. Okay, so the key points of today. Nice stable base. Correct hand position to catch our ball in, a cup or a bowl. Not pointing our fingers towards the sky. And lastly, you, it's very difficult to catch this thing unless you watch it. So you literally watch it all the way up and all the way back down again. Through all of your catching exercises, giving you a few tips on how to do it. Okay, these are just a few games you can play. You will need a few other people with you, so hopefully you've got that at home. Um, if not, maybe you can adapt them yourselves to try and play yourselves. But this first one is just a little bit of delay. Remember our key points, stable base, watch the ball really closely, soft hands. Okay, George, right, are we ready? So we start by facing the opposite way. George is going to count down three, two, one. Three, two, one. And I'll turn, and I'll try and take this hat. Just about got that. Okay, go again. Three, two, one. Take the hat, okay? Very simple, try that as many times as you want. Make it as challenging as you want. The throw can come a bit lower, a bit higher, whatever it might be. Second simple one is I stand facing the wall. Okay, George is going to do some low catches here. I'm going to go against the wall and I'm going to try and make the catch off the wall. And again, George can change sides. Oh, oh, just about there. He can change sides. He can do it so it goes a bit lower or whatever. Okay, first part of your test. I'm going to ask you to pause the video there, go away and give it a go. Okay, good, hope you got on well with that. This is uh, stepping it up a little bit more, a little bit of distraction this time. So I've actually lucky enough to got a cricket stump here. You can use anything you like. You can put a chair there, you can put um, a bat there, you can put a brick stand, a broom handle up, anything you like that's gonna cause a bit of an obstruction. And again, I'm using the wall. So I'm gonna get nice and low. I'm gonna try and hit the wall and catch it. Hopefully it's not gonna hit the stump on the way through. Okay, again, I'm, when I'm throwing it, I'm trying to get it as close to the stump as I can to make it a bit harder for me. But nice and simple. See how many you can do there. Maybe you can go back a bit further if you've got a chair a bit higher. Go back a bit further, maybe you can go from there. The second one's a bit trickier. You're going to need one person to feed you a ball, one person to be the distraction, and then you to make the catch. So we're just going to set that up quickly. Not going to get you. Okay, so... George's job here, that's the forward step, the step forward. George's job here is not to actually try and hit the ball, but just to be as big a distraction as he can with that cone. So the cone effectively is his bat. Okay, if we go. Oh, struggled, but I got it. Good. And 
if George gets close enough to it and flicks it, obviously he's going to divert it slightly. But I still have to make the catch. Good stuff. Okay, as you can see, a bit tricky. You need a few more people to help you, but all as to the fun of it, you can take it in turns. So, I want you to pause the video from now and then go away and give that a try. Okay guys, so if you notice we had a lot of different items we're catching earlier on. Um, so I also had a rugby ball and a football down in there in the pictures and just going to show you a few things you can do if you're lucky enough to have one of those at home. Okay, so first it's a nice basic passing. Remember our W position for our catching the ball. Same for the girls when they were playing netball. My hand catches the ball and now I'm in a position to pass it as well. So if I'm passing to George, I've got a nice high elbow furthest away from where I want to pass it. Put my arm string, point my fingers towards George's W, which is my target. That's my target, remember. Towards his target. Okay, remember I want to make sure I'm practicing off both hands. So passing from both sides of my body. I'm going to rock the ball backwards and forwards. And it's hitting our target straight away. Okay, not too worried about spinning it at the moment, but that can come at a later date. This is all we need to worry about, focus on hitting the target. So I point my fingers at the target as I'm hitting it. And I'm passing from both sides of my body. When I'm happy with that, a little bit of a challenge. This is a little bit harder to do. Remember, it will practice on catching, so this needs to be good. I'm just basically going to drop the ball onto my foot and try and catch it. George is going to try and catch it into his hands. Maybe I can do three to George. Four to George, one more to George, and then George can start kicking back to me. So I'm ready now. Good. So I want to be trying to catch with my hands. I don't want to be catching in here if I can help it with my arms. That stops me able to, able to pass it afterwards. So I can get my hands ready, catch with my hands. Okay, so that's with the rugby ball. George can swap over for the football, please. Okay, football again, same position with our hands. We're going to practice a chest pass this time. Okay, so remember with a chest pass from, from your basketball lessons, we're side on, no chicken wings, arms tucked in. We push out and we roll with our fingers, and our fingers end up pointing the opposite, our palms of our hand end up pointing the opposite way. Okay, so we're through towards our target again. And with that, we can put some bounces in as well. So if I'm doing a bounce pass, I want to be landing the ball two thirds of the distance between myself and my target. George's hands are still up ready, ready to catch. That means I'm not catching down here near my toes or up here. The bounce should be just about right. Okay, and lastly, a little bit of goalkeeper practice as well. We can kick in as well. So if you fancy yourself as a goalkeeper, this is a really good practice for you. Remembering the kick, it's got to be made to catch. You're not trying to score a goal. I'm going to drop that one. Okay. And you might need to move your body slightly towards the side to make the catch. Okay, or turn your hands around and change so you can catch the other way. Okay. Key thing is focusing on catching all the time. Sorry, you're so sorry. One more. Good. Okay, stop there. Okay guys, so um, this is a real challenge this one. This is a real test of how closely you're actually watching the ball. I've got four tennis balls here. If you can see, I've wrote numbers on them. Uh, one to four. Okay, I've put the, wrote the number on it four times around there. So this is a real challenge to see how closely I watch the ball. We'll give those to George. George is going to back up over there and I'm going to back up. Okay, so as George throws me the ball, I'm going to try and shout the number that's on the ball before I catch it. Okay, if I do that, I score a point and I get to keep it. Obviously making my life a bit easier with guessing the others. If not, I give it back to George and we continue on. Okay, so let's give it a go and see how it works. Here we go. Two. Oh, first start, I won that one. Thanks, George. Oh, you didn't, didn't. didn't see that one. So we we'll go again. Three. Got that one. Another point to me. Let's go. Four. Oh, it is four. 
And this one has to be one. One. When you're throwing the ball, try not to spin it because it's really hard to see that. But if you can watch it close enough, you can get the one. Okay. Okay, so give that a go. That's a fun game you can play. See how many times it takes you to get all four balls uh, with your parents or whoever else is helping you. Bit of a challenge. One last thing to say, when you're actually throwing the ball, try and throw it so it's flat rather than spinning because it's impossible to see the number otherwise and we have to play fair. Okay, I want you to pause the video now. Go away and give that a try. Okay guys, um, so final couple of exercises. We're going to actually use a bat or a racket for this one. Um, so I'm going to be doing the catching, George is going to be hitting the ball towards me. For this we're going to use a tennis racket, um, very similar exercise to what was happening from the wall but this time it actually comes off the bat or the racket a little bit quicker and we're not quite sure where it's going so we have to react a bit quicker. So really really simple, I'm just going to back up again, George is going to hit the tennis ball towards me. And I'm going to try and make the catch, obviously that was appalling. Okay, try and make the cat there, try and watch the ball closely. If I can get my feet in the way, move it across so to get my head underneath the line of the ball, that's even better. Okay, so apart from that fir first appalling drop, which I obviously wasn't ready for, um, that's the one off the racket. Pause your video now, go away and give it a try. Okay, last one, most realistic one of the lot when it comes to cricket. Um, but maybe one that you're not going to be able to do because you may not have the right equipment or enough people to help you with. But one person's going to feed it to me, I'm going to try and hit it towards George, angle it towards George so he can make the catch. We're going to have five attempts and see how many we get. Okay, are you ready? No. No. Got one. More place on the ball, please, thanks. Got two out of the five, okay? We go with five and then maybe swap your partners around, give yourself another go. So if you can do this one, it's a great exercise to try. If you can't, not a problem, but see what you can do. Enjoy. Okay guys, um, so I've given you a few little games, little tests, little drills if you like to practice your catching. Um, hopefully you've had a chance to go away and practice those now. So. This is what uh, the final thing we can talk about with our catching. Uh, and I wanted you to give it a go before I started to introduce this. Okay, so when we're talking about catching a thing like a tennis ball or a cricket ball, or something this sort of shape or size, um, we talk about soft hands. Soft hands, what does that mean? A bit confusing. Okay, well hopefully I'll try and explain it to you. Okay, so when we're catching the ball, we'll obviously have to watch it very closely. But if you notice, as the ball hits my hands, my hands kind of give way and let it go with the ball. So I'm trying to slow the ball down. So another way we could phrase it is slow hands. So rather than soft, slow, if that makes a bit more sense. Slowing the ball down with my soft hands, okay? Just to describe it really quickly, I've got an old rag here that I'm gonna put on the floor, okay? If I was to drop the ball on the rag, the rag would mimic my soft hands. Nice and soft, drops in nice and easily. If I was to drop it on the hard floor, that's what would happen if my hands were hard. Ball bounces. So therefore, the ball could potentially bounce out of my hands. So again, once more on the floor, bounce, making it harder for me to catch. Nice soft hands, sitting nice and quietly on there. So again, how do I achieve soft hands? Watching the ball closely, as the ball hits the cup of my hands, my hands kind of give way and try to slow the ball down, like so. So, okay, so now what I'd like you to do is, if you weren't too successful before, this is going to help you. If you were successful before, this is still going to help you. So go away, practice your few little drills. We've got a few games and challenges for you afterwards, but go away and practice your few drills. And remember this time, eyes on the ball all the way, nice, soft, slow hands. Thank you.